Hello, this is the High Caliber Man podcast with myself, Hugh Mayers, and this week I'm joined by radio broadcast journalist Lady Essie from Conscious FM. How are you doing, Lady Essie? I'm doing well, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, it's a pleasure, man. You know, it's always a pleasure to have a conversation with you. And I've jumped on your show so many times, but um, the roles are somewhat reversed. But it's a conversation, right? It's a com- that ultimately is a conversation. So um, I wanted to talk to you about um, an article that came out in Psychology Today um, last month. And it was um, by this psychologist called um, Greg Matos, right? The rise of single or lonely single men, the rise of lonely single men, right? Yeah. And the article gained, it's not so much the article and the contents of the article, but one of the things that I was staggered about is how much popularity gained amongst like women or or, or commentators from that side of the, of the fence. And um, it made me think, first of all, why is it so popular? What was so, what was so appealing about it? Because to my mind, um, lonely single men is nothing new so why, why was it kind of groundbreaking but um i i, I think jump in um, and tell me what's your for initial yeah, yeah what's your initial I mean, thoughts because it's a bit it's, it's, it's actually, kind of triggering or provocative so let's let's get I, your take I, on it let's get your take. i did because obviously i'm i'm, I'm on to, I, I go into it it is my favorite place to see what's going on like for just for comments like, i like going on it just for the comments like twitter is the place just to kind of start seeing what people are saying so i remember seeing the comments before i saw saw the article Mm-hmm. So I kind of started. I'm like, raw. That's a bit rough, isn't it? Whoosh. Tell me about some of the comments. And I'm not. A, I've got a Twitter uh, account which I, I haven't visited. It's probably got dust. Um, the password's got dust on it. I haven't been on there for ages. It, it was literally. I mean, it was literally very much about yeah, that's right, men. Yeah, they need to do better. <laughs> in my place, are lonely. You know, it was very. It was very male bashing by. A, it was. It was very that. Mm-hmm. So I kind of read them. And went, oh, that's a bit. That's a, this is a bit a hard topic. So I kind of. But I didn't read the article. I just saw the headline, and I said, oh, "Oh, okay." So, so I just saw, yeah, because what it was just the headline. So I think a lot of people. I mean, for me, I feel these days a lot of people comment just on the art, the heading. They don't actually read the full. I don't believe a lot of people read the full thing. And then obviously, once you get into the comments, you then comment on the comment. Yeah, and it goes down in different roles. So it's not necessarily anyone read the article. So it's only when. I got the article and I read it and I was like, okay, it's not nothing new. And I think one thing we're missing in these days is reading comprehension because in the article, he's actually got links. I don't know how many people actually clicked on the links. Why would they do that? <laughs> Why, <laughs> Why would they, they do, do that? Do that? It fit, the it's headline fit a narrative. And exactly. Me. Because, you know, when I, when I saw that article, my friend brought it to my attention, actually. And I said... Wait there, is this a, um, a rebuttal? Like the ghost of chemist Kevin Samuels, even from the grave, he's like, they're, I mean, they're still trying to debate and challenge that man from the grave. And it's almost like, does this fit into like a feminist narrative? See, see, we are, we are doing all right as women. And it's men that are going to be alone. But I remember this, this um, phrase that was said that single lonely men is nothing new, right? That yeah. they've always existed in society. We call them freaks, weirdos, and hermits. And this. Yeah, they've, they've, they've <laughs> they've always, always, what's new about always, them being exactly. single and, and lonely? And that's the thing. When you click on the link, the loneliness, like at the, the data that he used, yeah, that literally was what it says. It is. It's actually isn't new information. However, how it was rephrased, it made it seem like it's a rise. And I guess because we just came out of lockdown as well, and a lot of people were lonely during that time, and loneliness has. And loneliness in itself has you know, been, um, you know, in the forefront now because a lot of people find themselves lonely over the last two years. Mm-hmm. And so I guess it sound, it, sound, it fits the narrative about loneliness is something people are now talk about more because of we're post-lockdown. And everyone's going, yeah, you see, men are lonely, innit? Of course they are. And it does fit the narrative. And there's a lot of talk about men's mental health again, where, again, it's, it fits that narrative about... Um, there's a lot of very it's very polarizing at the moment it's very like men versus women i can't help but notice that on, on on the um on social media is that yeah, so much information polarizing. is 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 out there but as opposed to it being like empowering information no, it seems it like we're, it seems like information to weaponize so if there's information that says you know that like 87 80 percent of of american women are overweight and 87 percent of african-american women are overweight 
the people don't say, I don't hear people use that in a tone to say, this really needs to be addressed. And this is a cause for concern outside of attraction and, and, and mm -hmm. sexual marketplace. This is like life expectancy and quality of life, right? These are avoidable health complications like blood pressure, diabetes. So we need to have a conversation about that as a family. It's not, it's not kind of couched like that. It's kind of like, see, see, you're overweight. So people are yeah. revved up. And then likewise, when it comes to economic deficits on the side of men or whatever it is, relationships, in, in relationship skills inadequacies, quote unquote, right? Then they're used. Again, those those research, those kind of research or quotes will be used just to bust men over the head. So it's like there's some weird gender war it's, going on a bit. We're living it, in a weird think, universe at the moment. And you said the right thing, it's the gender wars. It's literally like if you keep everyone fighting each other against things then you kind of stops people thinking about what's really going on because if you if you're busy fighting fighting each other on the bottom about things that are not really they need to be fighting about because really, really it's not really a problem because everyone everyone feels lonely at some point because i think for me break it down he doesn't break down what loneliness is what is loneliness anyway loneliness is isn't it a, isn't it a subjective thing and everybody at some point in their lives have felt lonely, right? It's not a bad thing until it becomes to where you're probably like a hermit, one of those weirdo people. But loneliness is something a lot of people experience at some point in their lives. Well, just to jump in there, I was going to say that I always remember reading a book, a psychology book, years and years and years ago, and they made a distinction. The psychologist in the book made a distinction between loneliness as a psychological state and being alone. Because they are two different things. Oh, there there are people that are in the people that are like twenty five year marriages with children and everything, like that, and that they're then some of the loneliest people out there. Yeah, and then there's other people that live yeah. by themselves and spend a lot of time by themselves, but they may have friends and extended and family. That, and they're not and lonely. Quality of life that they're not lonely. They feel very whole. So, um, and, they, like and say, and it's think, a more state of mind loneliness. And I think again that that was a point. It was like people didn't really think about what does loneliness actually mean. You wasn't thinking about like you said. You could be in. There's a lot of like you said. A lot of people in relationships that are lonely, exactly. and a lot of single and a lot of single people who are not lonely. Yeah. So actually, you know, when you say loneliness, everyone's jumped onto this whole um, image of. But you didn't break. He didn't break. Actually, break down. What was he talking about? Loneliness. And then it's only when you looked at the data when he's talking about loneliness in particular parts of the world in cultures that are more individualistic where mm -hmm. that breeds more loneliness where in cultures where it's more community based on more communal you're not going to get as much loneliness from that because you are surrounded by people yes so again yes, yes, yes. It, it was one of those things so that was my first thing with it you know you didn't actually describe loneliness and like I said it's, it's subjective and some people maybe lonely because they've had bereavement in their lives. So maybe, are we talking about some of the men, they might have had a life change, they might have moved jobs. So are they lonely by circumstances or by choice? Well, well, he he. this is something that's raised in the article that the um the gentleman raised in the article, there's some of the key points. So one of them is that they in opportunities for heterosexual men, and notice he said heterosexual men, because there does seem to be a slight war against heterosexual men in, in, in the mainstream. Um, yeah. It's not against non-binary kind of identify as men or was born biologically woman that is now a man. It's not, it's, it's about those heterosexual, heteronormative, as they call it, cisgendered men. It yeah. seems to be like a yeah. kind of dig against them and, you know, this whole thing about the evil patriarchy, right? So it says dating opportunities for heterosexual men are diminishing as relationship standards rise. So that's an interesting, um, interesting, but have, but, interesting but idea. Really, tell me, tell mean, me what's your thoughts about that. But I mean, when did relationship standards get lowered anyway? Yeah, when was it easy? I mean, I it, when was it easy yeah, for heterosexual men to just I walk mean, into relationships? I mean, yeah, what I'm saying is, are you saying there was a certain point? I mean, is he is suggesting there was a certain point? together for 50 60 years they were talking about how that they, they, they would probably say standards were higher back then because you were caught in exactly um lady essie your mic seems to have dropped out you just we've just lost you on the sound i can barely hear you oh no um can you hear me now no it's gone low just as it was getting juicy and and and, and hot 
Can you, am I oh, back? Oh, here you come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right back in the building. Oh. Right back in the building. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying this. When does standard drop? Because if you think about, if you speak to any elders who are married for like more than 40, 40 plus years. Yeah. And you ask them how they started dating. They will tell you about courting. Right. And about how a man had to go to parents' house and ask permission. And had to do all this extra bits. So mm -hmm. if you think about standards, there were standards before. So you know, it's like, hold on a minute, maybe standards have dropped and it's on both sides. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe society has dropped standards because maybe society has now said it's okay to do this, this and this, which didn't happen before. Not saying anything's wrong with certain things, but, you know, it's like, when was the standard and who who set the standard? Whose standard are we going by? Well, you said 40 plus years and I'm, I'm sure that the kind of concept of one night stand, hot girl summer, living my best life out there having fun as a female quote unquote that wasn't the kind of common concept back then that existed no, it was, no, yeah, it and women talking concept. about you know like man, every other woman's magazine sort of claiming your sexuality owning your sexuality how to squirt how to do this how to all this sexualization like hypersexualization that's not from 40 years ago that's today so then um i'm wondering who are these women doing that with um <laughs> or that culture if it's, yes, and, with, it's, so it's not with the hermits, it's not with the, with the rise of the lonely men, but it's, I, I mean, they're they, doing that with some heterosexual men. There was an interesting um, fly that's with the other day, and it's, it asks women, women, would you date yourself? Ooh. Ooh. I was like, rah. That was a very interesting question, because if we're, if women are saying men have to be a particular standard, you probably have to check yourself and say, actually, would you date yourself if you met yourself as a as a person, would you, do you think you have the standards that you're asking for the other person? Mm -hmm. And probably question mm -hmm. to men as well, would you date yourself? That's a, uh, maybe that's, that's, a, question, maybe that's a question, yeah. if you are going on a dating scene, ask yourself first, would you date yourself? Are you yeah. the kind of person that if you met someone like yourself, would you think he was material to be dating? If you, if the answer is no, then maybe go work on yourself a little bit more before you go put yourself out there. Now that's a really good question because, um, Sometimes it was in, sometimes yeah. in pre in like kind of pre-marriage counseling, right? Sometimes you have that question that you ask people um, before you put your checklist together of what are your desirables and your non-negotiables and your pref preferred quality traits. Just list what are yours in all sincerity and good faith. What is it that you I hate to use this phrase, but what is it that you bring to the table? What are, what are the pluses? What's but, what? the problem, but I think the problem even, is... Some people don't even take an inventory of who the hell they are, but they just clearly want to go to the supermarket and go and shop for the best deal. But it's kind of like, well, what's, what, what what credit you got? Don't what, what, what plastic you working with, to use the metaphor? And I think that's the and that's the issue. A lot of people don't know themselves enough. They haven't done enough of the inner work yet mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, really know mm -hmm. what they want and what standards in a relationship they're looking for. So a lot of people are actually asking things of others that they haven't asked of themselves. And so when you're saying and like and a lot of people have probably gone through a lot of issues from when they were young or relationships. And so a lot of people haven't healed in between relationships. A lot of people probably jump from one relationship to another, finish some, broke up, rebound, broke up, rebound relationship. And so how many people- You said, actually bro you said broke up. You know, you know when, when it comes to men, I don't know about women as much, but men, sometimes we don't even break up. Men kind of, it's not like, when record don't, the record don't just stop. And then another record starts. It's like the DJ's mixing. There's a mixer deck. You know, like that mixer deck. It's a mixer. <laughs> and it kind of blends. It blends from one track into the next. Uh, That's the kind okay. of... I'm sorry to okay. let the secret out. That, um, You know, I broke... I, I, I yeah, sorry no, to no, let no, the I, secret I, out. I, but, I you know, it's just it's a reality show. So don't touch that dial. This is this is true power. You know what I mean? No, I understand. I, I, I know where there's been conversations where, some, where two females have actually had a discussion. It was like, when did you start dating him? And when did you actually end with him? And he's in the middle going, what, 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 what? And you kind of start realizing that actually there was an overlap. So yeah, so yeah, I can, I, I can, I can get that. Which then, which then causes the problem, because you know that's probably one of the things is that the mixing is probably something that shouldn't really happen. It should be like be honest with one of them, like. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm, I'm, not even talk, I'm not even talking moral. I'm not even talking from a moralistic point of view. There it's is not the argument, it's like, but I'm talking about from the side of. Um, because you said, do, do people take time out to heal, whether men or women? But I think yeah. sometimes people use 
a new relationship to block out the pain because it's painful like loss you know like when when a rela yeah. when relationship it's break up marriage is break up these are these are painful things and, and maybe that's very what painful can be extremely painful and like you know we don't always think let's take a course of therapy or go to um I don't know, go and, to Latin America to take some ayahuasca or go and sit with some monk. We don't necessarily go for whatever the process is, I'm just saying. I'm being a bit extreme yeah. with ayahuasca, but you know, like I, I, people don't always want to go for that process of other than, you know, I could meet somebody else and that just block out the um the past pain of, of what I had to deal and, with. And, but, but it doesn't because like you talked about loss, it's actually, it's a grief and you have to go through the grieving process because yeah. loss is loss. And then you have to go through the grieving process of that relationship of, of or maybe even who you are when you were in that relationship. And if you don't take the time to do it, it shows up somewhere else. So it always comes up. And that's where if maybe when people are much younger, maybe when they're starting out in their um, being taught the, the, the really because when you're young, you get asked, are you have you met somebody? But they don't give you the back background information. Like mm -hmm. this is this would mm -hmm. be good life skill life skills. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself in a relationship and it's brick and it doesn't work out. Make sure you give yourself time to heal, heal, or at least feel a little bit better before you move on to somebody else. Because if people are told out from a younger age, it might become a healthy habit in how they build yeah. relationships. Because then you know, actually, you know what? I'm not feeling great after this. Because because I think one of the things as well is, to, you know, the toxic positivity. Like always, feel good. You have to sit with the bad feelings mm -hmm. and sit mm -hmm. with them rather than trying to use another relationship or anything else to try and block out those horrible block feelings out, but, block out but emotions are emotions and you need to feel them and I think if we start teaching young people from a very young age about emotional stability and the emotional intelligence to go yes yeah, sometimes you're going to have unpleasant feelings resulting from a relationship not going the way you wanted it to go to and you need to learn how to sit with it go and seek therapy earlier so if we teach people those relationship skills from a younger age then we may not have articles like this going, hey, many needs a man up and get better, getting better relationship skills. Because if you haven't been taught it from, a, from when you're young, you don't have the habits, you don't have the know-how how to do it. It is a good point. that it is a, it, These are skills that people can actually acquire. They can learn. But it would seem that like even in schools, they teach young people, they're more interested in teaching young people about sex, functionality of sex and sexual but not the emotional about, about the emotional, the emotional side of, or the yeah. relational side and how to kind of like and, take their own well-being and, and, and to deal with and that's the most important part of it because the emotional is what impacts a lot of people because 